بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم نو وی ول ڈسکس دی پیتھو فزیولوجی اف اولیگو ہیڈ رمنیوز امنیوٹک فلوئڈ از فارم بائی اسپیسیفک میکانیزم ان پریگنسی فرسٹ آئی ول ایکسپلین ہاؤ امنیوٹک فلوئڈ از فارم نارملی اینڈ دین ون بائی ون آئی ول کلیریفائی ہاؤ دا ڈفرنٹ کازز اف اولیگو ہیڈ رمنیوز وچ وی ڈسکس بیفور ریڈیوس دا اماؤنٹ اف لائک کر اراؤنڈ دا بیبی ان دا ٹاپ رائٹ کارنر اف دس ویڈیو یو کین فائنڈ دا کمپلیٹ لسٹ اف ویڈیوز ریلیٹڈ ٹو اولیگو ہیڈ رمنیوز سو ہاؤ امنیوٹک فلوئڈ از پروڈیوس نارملی In the first half of pregnancy, amniotic fluid is derived from fetal and possibly maternal compartment by diffusion of water and salute. Okay, so remember this important point. First half of pregnancy, diffusion of water and salute. Basically, the water and salute freely traverse the fetal skin and may diffuse through the amnion and chorion as well. And this amniotic fluid in the early gestation is a uh, dialysate that is identical to the fetal and maternal plasma but with a lower protein concentration what happened in the second half of the pregnancy uh, by the second trimester the fetal skin becomes keratinized making it uh, impermeable to further diffusion at this time fetus contributes to the amniotic fluid volume and composition almost exclusively through the fetal urination and urine has been observed in the fetal bladder as early as 11 weeks uh, trans abdominally and 9 weeks trans vaginally so this is how the amniotic fluid is produced in the first half by diffusion of water and solutes and in the second half by fetal urination and the in input uh, into amniotic fluid is from the fetal urine and lungs fluid and output is from the amniotic fluid uh, which include the fetal swallowing and intramembranous flow to the placenta and to the fetus as you can see here in this picture now we will explain how the maternal diseases cause oligohydramnios first of all hypertension maternal hypertension causes utero placental insufficiency and uh, poor perfusion of water and solutes through the amnion and chorion and this fetus has the diminished uh, urine output resulting in decreased amount of lyca this is how the oligohydramnios take place in the hypertension so what happens in the chronic kidney disease chronic kidney disease uh, may cause impaired glycolytic uh, integrity and alteration in the complement and renin angiotensin aldosterone system in the kidney thereby increasing the risk of preeclampsia and high blood pressure which in turn decreases the uh, liquor volume as we discussed before uh, then what happens in diabetes insipidus diabetes insipidus causes oligohydramnios by maternal dehydration and uh, why is there oligohydramnios in maternal dehydration basically this dehydration causes the marked effect on the maternal fetal amniotic fluid dynamics by causing the poor perfusion of water and solutes through the amnion and chorion and thus the fetus has diminished urine output possibly contributing to the development of oligohydramnios Now we will explain how pregnancy complications cause oligohydramnios first of all spontaneous rupture of membrane i don't need to explain why is there oligohydramnios in case of spontaneous rupture of membrane the ruptured membrane will not let amniotic fluid volume to stay at an optimum level and what happens in preterm premature rupture of membrane there is a continuous leaking or trickling of amniotic fluid resulting in oligohydramnios now the post date pregnancy there are several theories but some theories state that in post term pregnancies there is a redistribution of the blood flow due to increased um, uh, fetal weight resulting in renal hypoperfusion and decreased urination that may cause the oligohydramnios now let us explain how fetal complications cause oligohydramnios like iugr and ddds uh, about 85% of iugr infants have oligohydramnios and this condition occur because the blood flow from peripheral organs like kidneys uh, is diverted to the brain and renal perfusion and urinary flow rates are commonly reduced in infants with iugr an amniotic fluid index of less than 5 cm further increases the risk of iugr Now coming to TTTS, twin to twin transfusion syndrome. In TTTS, uh, there is a state of um, transfusion which causes the donor twin to have decreased blood flow, uh, retarding the donor's development and growth, and also a decreased urinary output, leading to lower than normal level of amniotic fluid becoming oligohydramnios.
Now we will explain how structural causes result in oligohydramnia. Uh, we discuss the different uh, structural causes first of all like bilateral renal agenesis uh, also called the dysplasia which happens in cases of Porter syndrome. So what happened in this case by the end of the second trimester or by the second trimester what happens that the fetal skin becomes keratinized making it uh, impermeable to further diffusion as I've explained before uh, at this time the fetus contributes to amniotic fluid volume and the composition almost exclusively through the fetal urination but what happens in case of the renal agenesis uh, what happens that there is the uh, urine production of the um, uh, fetus which is uh, diminished so uh, there is a reduced amount of liquor what happens in urethral obstruction? The urethra is basically the tube that allows the bladder to empty into amniotic space, making it possible for the body's uh, urine to maintain the normal amniotic fluid level around the baby. Over the time, this blockage can cause the permanent uh, kidney damage and when the urine can no longer be drained, the fluid around the baby, um, also called the amniotic fluid, tends to decrease. And what happens in the cystic dysplasia, the same mechanism which I have explained in the renal agenesis is responsible for oligohydramnios in case of cystic dysplasia as well. Now what happens in the Meckel-Gruber syndrome? In Meckel-Gruber syndrome, there is the uh, classical uh, triad of uh, occipital encephalopathy, polycystic kidney and post-axial polydactyly. Cysts develop first in the glomeruli in the cortex and cystogenesis progress uh, along the tubules and the collected duct in the medulla. And abnormal uh, fetal renal function is a frequent cause of oligohydramnios or anhydramnios, which is the common complications of the uh, Meckel-Gruber syndrome. Now, what happens in the Vactral syndrome? Vactral stands for vertebral defects, anal atresia, cardiac defects, tracheosophageal fistula, renal anomalies, and the limb um, abnormalities. So, abnormal renal function is a frequent cause of oligohydramnios or anhydramnios in them. What happens in utero-placental insufficiency? Basically, um, utero-placental insufficiency results in decreased lichen volume because it causes the blood flow to redistribute to the fetal brain rather than abdomen and kidneys and that causes the poor urine output resulting in oligohydramnios. Coming to the infectious causes of oligohydramnios, congenital uh, viral infections like CMV causes oligohydramnios. And what are the reasons for oligohydramnios in infection? Basically, different studies have proposed um, a different mechanism, but uh, most of the studies say that the microbial invasion of amniotic fluid uh, by the fetal infection and the development of the fetal inflammatory response syndrome may lead to the uh, redistribution of the blood flow away from the fetal kidneys, and that results in decreased uh, fetal urinary output and oligohydramnios. Coming to the iatrogenic causes of oligohydramnios, AC inhibitors like enalapril, lisinopril and captopril are responsible for oligohydramnios and studies show that late uh, pregnancy usage of uh, AC inhibitors and angiotensin receptor blockers may cause a severe oligohydramnios due to fetal renal impairment. And affected neonates will often suffer from uh, fetal renal and respiratory failure and all, all these changes cause the alteration in the normal mechanism of amniotic fluid formation in the fetus. Now, why the prostaglandin synthase inhibitors like endomethacin and ibuprofen causes the oligohydramnios? The mechanism by which the endomethacin and these prostaglandin synthase inhibitors cause oligohydramnios um, is, is still uh, under study but uh, it is proposed that the uh, these substances cause the reduced perfusion of the fetal kidney with subsequent decrease in the fetal urine production and the reduction in the perfusion is thought to be caused by the suppression of the renal activity or vasoconstriction of the renal arteries i would like to complete my presentation with this quote the only thing standing between you and outrageous success is the continuous hard work so work very hard and never give up as it's hard to beat a person who never gives up. Thank you so much. Allah Hafiz.